Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me on here. Of course. So we have so much to catch up on. I can't believe it's been, I think, three years since wow. Bali. And I think it was two since I saw you in Malibu. I can't remember. So yeah, start. No, it, actually, can I say it has to be longer than that because I was in Malibu almost three and a half years ago. So three years ago, three years ago was the last time I was there. So, okay. Yeah. A while. So Bali is a long time ago. Time flies. Maybe I'm off in my years. Well, I'll start with this. What is empowering the body, mind, and soul body, okay. mind, intuition? So my business is empowering body, um, but it's always been so much more than the physical body. So when I went through my own transformation, it was a very spiritual experience. I was coming out of a really unhealthy lifestyle. And I found that through the power of taking control of my physical body, I was able to access parts of myself that I had never been able to before. So it was spiritual. It was emotional. Um, I had to be willing to go to really dark corners of myself and see myself in from different perspectives to start to heal on levels that are much deeper, deeper than the physical body. So when you take control of the physical body, when you learn how to harness the power of healthy eating and caring um, for the things that you put into your body, the things that you put out into the world, the way you nurture yourself, um, you begin to become empowered. That's, I love that word, empowerment. Um, but you begin to become empowered in many different ways. So I think that's where it all started. Um, yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't look that deep. They just think, oh, I did a workout, done. Or I just walk. Like, it's a whole process. And we have similar views on how the mind impacts the body. Yes, yes. So how are you first introduced to more than just like, let me eat a salad? And, and what is this transformative healing that you offer your clients? Okay, so, okay, let's see. Um... So again, I went through this whole transformation process. I, you know, I was in competition at the time. I went from like this party girl, Hollywood drug, um, uh, unhealthy lifestyle. Although I'd always worked out in the gym, I'd always cared about the superficial aspects of, you know, staying fit and all of that. Um, I was not healthy though internally. Um, mentally, I wasn't healthy. I still had a lot of negative thoughts going on. So I went through the whole um, transformation process, got into competition. It changed my entire life. I went, you know, I went cold turkey. I stopped, I stopped drinking. I stopped partying. And that in itself, just cutting out those toxins in my life, um, which also cut out toxins of human beings that didn't belong, um, that in itself, shedding that opened me up to this this idea that, oh God, I'm so much more, I'm so much stronger than I thought I was mentally. Um, I have the ability to manifest and control anything that I really want in my life, anything that I want to bring into my life. I have this ability. Um, it's just amazing how powerful our minds are. And when you learn how to kind of harness all of that, um, you allow so much to come in. So, okay, now I'm losing my train of thought. I was talking about the transformation um, and that's how, so I got, that's pretty much how I got started in all of that. I've always been into fitness and nutrition, um, but the competition took it to another level. The competition gave me a real tangible goal. Um, the problem with competition, as you know, uh, there's, it's not the healthiest way to do things. And in the very traditional way of bodybuilding, it's, you know, you eat 190 grams of animal protein a day. You, you kill yourself in the gym. The harder you work, the more the results. It's this very achievement-based lifestyle. And I did go through that process. Um, my first time getting ready for a show, I was hardcore. I did it in six weeks, and it was an amazing you know, transformation. But the come down from that was very difficult. I actually, um, I, I'm sure a lot of competitors can relate to this. I've written blogs about it since 2009. Um, but I went through like a whole depression after my first show. I felt, you know, you eat food like a normal human being and you think you've gained all this weight and really it's just water weight. And then you go into this psychological cycle of like, oh my God, I can't show my face in the gym again because one week ago I stepped on stage in one second place and now I feel like a cow and I can't control myself. I have no control. I have no discipline. Everything just felt like it goes out the window. So I went into that really, really dark place. but looking back that dark place is where i learned the most that dark place helped me to um, create the programs that i have now which are much healthier lifestyle programs 
But I'd say I went through about three years of this like vicious cycle, competing, feeling at my peak and then coming down. And it was just ongoing. And I didn't know how to pull myself out of it. Um, it wasn't until I stopped competing that I really, really got out of that. The whole thing is a very spiritual experience. It's a very empowering experience. Um, and it, it, it pushed me to explore other areas. So, you know, fitness now is a huge thing. Back then I could walk into a gym and I might see like male bodybuilders. I might see th figure uh, female competitors, but there were no bikini like mainstream kind of people out there. They just didn't, hadn't existed yet. So my process was learning how to accept my body at all different stages, how to honor my body, how to feed my body um, healthy nutrition and all of that, um, non-competition diet, all of that, learn how to accept that um, there is a certain way that you need to nurture and take care of your body that doesn't have to be hardcore. You don't have to be depleted and all of that. What led me into that next stage of the, the true spiritual side of everything was I started to travel. So my business was taking off. I had a really huge online um, business. At the time, there weren't a lot of people doing that. Like I said, there weren't a lot of competitors. So there, weren't, there wasn't a lot of direction and people telling us the right way to do things. There's like one way to do things. Um, and I'm a very my way kind of person. So once I discovered something for myself that worked, I started to teach it. And then I started to um, feel into other people and what they needed. So I was prepping my first client for her first competition when I was getting ready for my first show. So I've had thousands of clients over the years, online, in person, and it's been an exciting journey. Um, I've had to learn how to let go of control. And that's the big lesson for, that was a big lesson for me for many years. Um, and let people have their own journey experience. My experience was empowering and enlightening and all of that, but everybody is different. There's not one way to do things. Um, there's many, many different ways. We're all on these different paths. So my, my job ended up being guiding people down whatever direction they needed to go and the healthiest way that I knew how and teaching them that this is more than just the physical body. We're more than just you know, we're humans having this earthly experience. We're in this body, but we have soul. We have intuition. There's things that we cannot see and cannot explain. Um, and learning how to power, uh, harness the power of the mind, obviously. So I think that's when it started moving into a direction that was so much more than just, um, you know, I'm not just a trainer. I'm not just this girl that works out in the gym and has a hot body. Um, there was more to it than that. I always knew that. I think a lot of us know that. But it's how do we, how can we put ourselves out there in the world and um, speak this message when we're coming forward with this physical body? How can we be more than that? So I think that was my big transition. That was the difficult part for me. Um, so I'm at the peak of my business. Everything is booming. I'm making more money than I know what to do with. I'm in my um, mid, late 20s. And I started traveling because I was like, okay. Let's travel. So I'd get on a plane by myself, fly somewhere, enjoy whatever country I was in, ex have these you know, amazing experiences. Um, when you travel alone, as you know, you talk to people you wouldn't normally talk to. Um, you end up getting involved in activities you wouldn't normally do. You're, you're just, you're more, you're this open vessel. There's no distraction. Um, unless you, know, you have your phone with you or something. Other than that, there's no distraction. Um, when you want to stop and do something, you do it. And you learn how to listen to yourself in different ways. So the traveling part started for me as, truly it started as an escape to get rid of bad relationships. So I mean, that's the honest truth. I was in really bad, I had harnessed all, this other, all these other parts of myself, um, spiritually, you know, physically. I was teaching this beautiful thing to my clients, yet I still had this one aspect of my life that was, exactly the same since I was 25 years old. And you and I have talked about, you know, lots of different things, relationships, and we bonded. So we, we speak about what women speak about. And you know that I had a lot of really unhealthy relationships. Um, they were a variety of, you know, verbal abuse, physical abuse, um, just people that were really heavy energy and truly holding me back from fully expanding into myself. And the travel was sort of a way for me to take back my power and be like, you know, F you, I can go wherever I want. I don't need a boyfriend to travel. Like, you know, you want to be a bad partner? Well, I don't need a partner. I can do everything on my own. 
So it was more of like a rebellion thing at first. Um, but in this rebellion state, I guess that's where I learned the most because in that rebellious state, which is really coming from ego, I, I was discovering parts of myself that I didn't even know existed. And I was having experiences. I was having retreat like experiences, really life changing experiences. And every time I come back to the United States, I felt like a different person. And I felt like I no longer aligned with these relationships and different people in my life. And even what I was doing in my business, it kept, I just kept expanding and travel has the power to do that. Um, so I had this idea. I remember it very clearly. I was in Hawaii. I was in um, Kauai, which is just the most beautiful, pure uh, island of all of Hawaii. And I had this vision of doing this. And this is before, I mean, I had never been to a retreat. Like I had never been to official retreat. Um, I was, I wasn't, I was into yoga a little bit, but that's the only thing I ever heard about retreats was like monks, yoga, and like silent retreats and things like that. And it was always, it was always a curious um, fascination to me, but I had never thought to go to one or do one or anything like that. So I'm in Hawaii and I, I just had this whole vision of, oh my gosh, I need to move here. You know, my, it was my first time in Hawaii and I'm like, this is like where it's at. I need to be on this island. I think we've talked about actually this too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because it's something about an island is just like, it's so magical. And I just had this vision of like, I want to live in Hawaii. I want to, I want to leave everything behind and just go. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, buy this huge building and I'm just going to turn it into like a retreat center, maybe an old apartment building. And I'm going to, each unit is going to be its own little thing. And my clients will come stay and we'll eat healthy food and, you know, we'll, we'll have fire cer ceremonies and circles around the ocean. Like, you know, I just had this magical uh, thought in my head, fantasy. Um, that didn't happen. I came back to reality and I had, you know, hundreds of clients to take care of. And that just wasn't reality. Um, I did eventually move to Malibu, as you know, and that was sort of my cleansing space where I could always go back to and, um, have a little bit of that, you know, of the, take bits and pieces of things I've experienced around the world. I had that in Malibu, which is beautiful experience. Um, but what it did do is ignite something in me, uh, with, within, um, the parameters of retreat. I wanted to have land somewhere. I wanted to start retreats. I didn't know what that meant or looked like. Like I said, I'd never been to one. And lo and behold, um, maybe a few years later, I was in a really bad, bad, bad relationship. And I don't know how I got caught up with this person, but I had to get away from him. It was actually very physically abusive. And I left and I went to Panama and I was, I ended up connecting with all these people. They were all Canadian for whatever reason. And we had this sailboat. We had a sailboat, we had a captain, and we had this guy that wanted to bring people together to start retreats. And then there was a yoga instructor, and then there was myself, who was this empowerment transformation coach. And we all came together. We had people sign up, and all these people from uh, Canada ended up signing up. So we had all these Canadians, and it happened to be all women who came, didn't even know there was no curriculum, there was nothing really laid out. We lived on a sailboat for a week um, in the San Blas Islands and just sailed around. Um, the captain had like access to all these islands, which is still inhabited by the original Kuna tribe, which super unique experience. Um, we lived off the land, you know, we were in bikinis the whole time, I learned how to spear fish. I mean, we hunted for our food um, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful experience. All these strangers coming together and having this, it was a transformative experience. And that's when I knew this is what I'm going to do. This is, this is the next step. So that's how that all happened. <laughs> well, you do have a way of bringing people together. It must have come from your journey yourself because when it comes to post-show depression, which is very common, it kind of relates to normal people yo-yo dieting where it's like the ups and downs. So yeah. then you had to mentally get past that. And then as far as the independence that you can't avoid when you're traveling alone, it just was part of your journey. And you brought us together and I flew across the world to meet you. Yes. And I want to know if you have other plans to hold more retreats like the one you held in Indonesia. The last retreat I did was in the Amazon jungle and it was in Peru. And I had, I'm a certified herbalist. So I ended up getting a certification in that in Ohio, in California. 
and I took my graduating class. We went to um, the Amazon in Peru, um, down in Bolivia. My teacher, who's in her 70s, ended up coming with her husband. And then, you know, my whole entire graduating class. It was a really beautiful experience. That was the last retreat I did. That was about a year and a half ago. And I, that, that was a great retreat, but, um, and it was a great experience for everybody. It was actually one of the best retreats I've ever done. We were with a shaman the whole time, and it was just, it was very powerful. And that retreat, we ended up working with plant medicine. And I haven't yet done that in a formal setting with a retreat. I don't know if that's necessarily the direction I want to go in. I don't feel called and compelled to guide that sort of retreat. But I am, like you said, I do bring people together, and I, I lead people on a path and they make their own decisions though. They choose which way they want to go. And this particular retreat, it just happened to blossom this way. I had a retreat in Tulum and when I was at the retreat in Tulum, I was being Tulum, Mexico. I was being drawn personally to go down to Belize, which is all the way down the Caribbean coast um, at the bottom of Mexico, kind of sandwiched between like Guatemala and Mexico. And I had been drawn to go there. I'd never been to Belize in my life. Um, I really didn't know anything about it. And so I rented a car and I ended up driving all the way down the coast and I was like, I'm just going to go to Belize. And, but that didn't end up working out. You needed a lot of permits and things like that. And I wasn't prepared. So I thought, okay, I'll come back and I'll, I'll dedicate a trip to Belize. So, um, maybe six months later I went back, dedicated, okay, this is going to be my exploration of Belize. Um, maybe I'll do a retreat there. Maybe that's why I'm being pulled there. And I'm very intuitive. I'm very sensitive. And my, I guess my, my psychic um, witchy abilities have grown tremendously over the last, over the last two years, especially, but just over a lifetime. And um, I knew intuitively that there was something there for me. I didn't know what. Um, so I went on Airbnb and I booked a room um, in the jungle because I wanted to be in the most pure, natural part of Belize. And I get to the jungle, I arrive there, and it turns out the, the land that I'm on is just like, it's overlooking the McCall River, it's like mountain ranges, it's just, it's just this vast, beautiful jungle land, it's so rich, the people are so amazing, very similar to the Balinese people, um, the Belizeans are just super friendly, it's this eclectic melting pot of different cultures, and I got to the land and I realized, oh my gosh, all this land is for sale where I was staying. It was actually an eco community and there was uh, parcels of land that they had sold off. So this was one of the homes, this eco home that somebody had built in this eco community. Um, and I ended up speaking, uh, oh, actually I just realized this, they were Canadian also. And I ended up buying the land from Canadians. And so I got on a, I got on a conference call when I was still in Belize. We set everything up and I just, it, that was it. I came back, they emailed me contracts and I signed it. And I, I now was a landowner in Belize and it's just land. It was just land, but I had a vision of building this eco center, um, sort of a transformative healing center, um, in Belize, a place that people can come at their, at their will and stay in this eco community that I'm building. Um, or they can have a kind of like a turnkey retreat like experience. So maybe they come alone or they come with a partner. Everything is laid out for them if they want to participate. Um, or they can just, you know, take in nature and enjoy, enjoy their life. Um, and I'm also going to be renting it out to practitioners and leaders and guides that want to conduct their own retreats. So I think that we all need a little retreat in our life. Um, I think it's really, really important to separate from our day-to-day -day life and our, you know, the rat race. And so the retreat center is the next thing I'm working on right now. So to round it all up, um, because of that, I'm, after the Amazon, I decided I'm taking a break from conducting retreats. Um, I have been doing more local stuff though. So I call them like little weekend retreats or day retreats. So I'm doing things here in um, LA and um, I'm also working with different practitioners in LA and hopefully expanding this all over the world also and sort of preparing them to be able to give retreats and circles and things like that. Um, I've done circles many times over the years. So circles are sort of a little mini, you know, evening retreat that we bring people together and have, um, you know, just ceremonial work and that sort of thing. So. 
So that's what's happening right now. It's a lot. <laughs> the healing center sounds so amazing. Like you said, people, they need to just go into nature, get grounded. And you following your intuition and just biting the bullet while you were there. I love that. That's so like a girl after my own heart because yeah, intuition. That's like how I met you when I got to the retreat that night of traveling. Everyone's like, oh, you never met Michelle and you literally just flew. I was like, my God told me to. <laughs> so. yes. And then, and you, you know, you, I mean, you ended up bonding with all of the women on, I mean, we were like, a, we were like sisterhood. I mean, yes. it was like, which is the, that to me is the coolest thing. Like when we all come together, something pulls us, we trust our intuition, we're guided, we just trust it. It doesn't make sense. And I'm sure you told a lot of people, a lot of things you've done in your life. And they're like, Erin, you're nuts. What do you <laughs> yes. mean? You're going across it. Like, what are you talking about? And I've been told that over and over. And if I had listened to that, I never would have taken the leaps that I have. And I think sometimes when, when you're walking your own path, you start to question, wait, is this really right? Or do I just want it to be right? You know, you start to second guess yourself. And this is why empowering yourself in different ways, the mind, the body, the spirit is really, really important. It's harnessing all of that to give you the knowing. And now my knowing is a very visceral feeling. I actually have um, physical things that happen to me when things are spot on or when they're not. Um, I work a lot with numbers, like I'm really into like numerology, but I see repetitive numbers in my life. I'm open to like all of these signs that really guide me into these beautiful directions. And now I know enough to know that I just trust it. I don't care how crazy it sounds or how weird it sounds. I don't care. I just, I know, I just know, I know what's in my heart and I trust it. So, and, and all these unique things that we do that people don't do because it's out of their comfort zone. We learn so much from. Yes, yes, yes. So I want to ask you later about the herbalism and the plant medicine. I would love to know more about that, but I want to ask before I forget, what is the importance of nutrition when it comes to more than just the body, like the mind and the body? Tell me your thoughts on that. So nutrition is always in my life, even when I was really, really young, even when I was a party girl, like drinking every night and doing all kinds of things, I was still eating really healthy. I mean, ask any of my friends. I had, I had like a whole regimen when it came to food. So, so, but it was, it was more about the aesthetics. Like it, I wanted to look good and it, I wanted to feel good, you know? So, so for me, the food was that served that purpose later on in competition that only exacerbated because I was only getting more fit and looking hotter, the better I ate. Um, but I noticed mental clarity. I mean, the first time I ever just dieted in general, when I was still taking in like way too much protein and way too little carbs, um, I noticed mental clarity in the beginning. So in the beginning, it was like, I woke up and I just felt energetic. My physical body felt energetic. I felt clear minded. I could, you know, I could put sentences together very, very clearly and quickly and articulate myself. And I just felt good over time though. I felt depleted eating that way. And we're talking about competition diet. Right. So food is everything. I mean, I don't think people realize how important food is and it is nourishment for this. This is our temple. This is like our, it's like a well oiled machine that we need to be taking care of. So everything we put into it matters. And over time, as you know, actually right before my first retreat that I did in Bali, which was maybe a year before the one you came to, I had turned vegan. Um, I, I did it as an experiment. It was more to detox from all those years of just like, you know, eating all this terrible, you know, just not being, um, eating enough nutrients and, um, detoxing from all the animal chemical, all of that, you know, organic has been around for a, a while, but, but there, but there wasn't a lot of selection. I live in LA, so I probably had access to so much more than most people. But I mean, when I was a competitor, we didn't even have those kind of options. It took a while for that to kick in. So even when I went vegan, there wasn't a lot of vegan, healthy vegan options out there. And there wasn't a lot of information out there yet when it came to veganism. So, and I had been working with clients on a vegan level. So I knew how to do plant-based diets and that sort of thing, but I had never yet experimented with myself. So I went, I went hundred percent vegan because that's how I am all hardcore. Like let's cut out every bit of animal, everything. And I lost about 10 pounds in like two and a half weeks. And so that's, that's a muscle mass that I was losing. Cause I had a lot of muscle mass and it was, I was depleting and I didn't realize it. So 
at first when I did go vegan, I felt again, the same thing, this like new fresh mental clarity. I felt light. My digestion changed immediately though. I mean, my waist like shrunk like this, not just cause I was like starving, but because my digestion, like everything was just flowing in and out. And I realized though, after losing those first 10 pounds in that month, that first month and dropping body fat like crazy, um, that I wasn't getting in, I wasn't balancing it properly. So psychologically, I was coming off of this competition diet and I was scared to eat those carbs. And the only way to truly get in complete proteins, essential amino acids from your proteins um, is to, as a, as a plant-based eater, is to eat a lot of carbs and a lot of fats. And if you're not willing to go there, you're actually going to lose muscle mass. You are going to, I call it skinny fat. I mean, you're, you're really going to start losing the elasticity in your skin. All the nutrients that are required, that animal gives us, are, that are required to keep our, our body strong. And so the protein is a really big deal. So I, I personally went from, you know, turning vegan and then trying to reintroduce certain foods again, certain animals like chicken, for example, something I ate all the time. My body was like, nope, it's re it started rejecting it. And it wasn't just because I wasn't producing the amino acids anymore. It was, I knew on a mental, psychological, emotional level that I was done with certain foods. And so for me, I feel like we are supposed to constantly be, we are, we are ever evolving human beings. This is why we start as babies and we get bigger and then we start to deteriorate and die because that's what, that's the cycle of life. So just the same, you're not feeding yourself baby food for the rest of your life. You know, you're not feeding, you should be feeding yourself as you grow and, and transform, you should be feeding yourself accordingly and really learning to listen to your body. So nutrition is a huge part of our, of our, of our entire lifespan and evolution. Um, now I, I hate saying this because it's, it's like a coined a term now, but like intuitive eating. Um, it's important to have that though. It's important to listen to your body. My clients make fun of me. Michelle, I'm listening to my body and my body wants a whole bunch of cake right now. I'm like, no, 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 no. you're missing my point. But intuitive eating and listening to your body is really important. So understanding that you're not like everybody else. So just because everyone else eats rice doesn't mean you didn't eat rice. Maybe you eat rice and you feel super bloated after. Maybe you eat oatmeal, same kind of concept. So it's really about nurturing your body, listening to your body, feeding your soul, really. Um, another thing I want to say about nutrition, because I think this goes hand in hand, what we put into our body matters, but what we put on our body matters. Like what we put in our hair matters. What we put on our skin matters. Your skin is this, it absorbs everything. Like it literally, it goes straight to your bloodstream. Half the stuff that you, your environment, everything matters. And I, again, got a little cuckoo with all of this. And I decided at a certain point to cut out all chemicals from my life after I'd gone vegan. So, you know, it was a, it was a detox of the home, like getting rid of all cleaning products and that sort of thing. And then it became a detox of like, I don't wear makeup that I only, everything I wear, I, for a long time, I made everything. I made my own makeup. I made my own lotion, you know, that sort of thing. But now on the market, there's so many organic natural products that you can buy that are chemical free. Um, because imagine all these chemicals that we're getting from our toxic, you know, environment anyways, and that we put on our skin. Yeah, it smells great, but really it's, it's, it, it, it is inhibiting us from fully being awake on this planet. And this is why so many people, they just go with the status quo. They don't step out of their comfort zone. They don't get out of the box. It's scary. They live in fear. They live here. And I feel like when you start to really um, like purify yourself in this way, you become this channel to reconnect to the higher realms because that's what we used to be connected to. We used to live off the land you know, ancient tribes, we used to, we used to literally sit around a fire in the evening. And that's actually why salt lamps are really great. I don't know if you guys use, you use salt lamps, but, um, in the evening, that's the kind of light that we sh that should be emanating in our room is like the salt lamp because it mimics, um, it mimics the fire, like when in ancient times, not the blue light and the, the, the harsh light coming from our computer and our phones. So little things like that. I got a little nutty with all of that, but but what I found with my own personal experience with it is that it opened me up in a way that I just, I can't explain. And I just, I keep evolving with this and I trust when I have these gut feelings. And then sure enough, 
and I'm not saying I'm always ahead of the game, but I have to say all these things that I've experimented with myself within three to five years of that, it turns into this booming thing where everyone's, you know, buying their blue light blocking glasses and they're doing this and you know, everything. So, so I feel like whatever it is, I'm very intuitive with the body. Maybe that's the gift that I was given in this lifetime is just knowing how to feel into myself and teaching other people to do the same, but I always trust it. I always trust it. Yeah. We're on the same page with so much of that. We could probably talk for hours. I'm just yeah. thinking out loud. I feel like maybe because when we competed, you had to be so self-aware. Yeah. Well, at least for myself, maybe that's what started with me also like experimenting and you said it was a little nutty, but it's like, let me think for myself. This doesn't sound like it's safe. Let me try something else. And then you don't have to do every witchy thing, but if something, if the salt lamp relaxes you, why not add it to your life? So just Next. little things, they're all little tools. I might have to talk to you separately about switching, um, switching to plant-based. There's so many ways to do it where you don't have to be 100% vegan. It's, it's too right. bad that there's all these labels on everything. Cause you're like me, we're like, I can't be in a box. So that's why when people ask me all the time, well, how, are you vegan, Michelle? I'm like, well, I have vegan tendencies, but I'm, I'm predominantly plant-based. That is what I am. Um, and I might eat red meat a couple times a year. Um, I really go off of how I feel. When I travel, I tend to experiment with food because, God, I'm in a country that I might never be in or not for a long time. When I was in the Amazon, I, I, ate, I ate maggots out of like nuts. Yeah, but it's a delicacy there. Okay. And I was with everyone in my retreat group was actually vegan, like 100%. And they were mortified that I did this, but I had never done it in this lifetime. And I just wanted to try it. I tried it once. I don't need to do that again. Um, it did taste bad though. Um, but yeah, so I think that, I think that um, it's great that you're open to exploring that in yourself. Um, like I have, I know that we're a lot alike. So we're these super independent women. Um, that can't be put in a box and we want to have a taste of everything so that we know for ourselves so we can make our own decision and i think that's how people should be i really do i think that this society really numbs that in us um that's a whole other topic i won't get too into it numbs you if you let it and i feel if like it's a choice it, yeah. and people think that they don't have the choice you mentioned earlier about evolution and well like i i'm cycling off of keto i'm never just keto i'm never just vegan, I just cycle for certain amounts of time because one, to experiment, I listen to my body when it's time for a change and it just teaches you what works best for you, like you said. Yes, definitely. Tell me more about your study of plants and herbalism. So I have been drawn to do this herbalism course for a long time. It's just, there was, there's there at the time, there weren't a lot of herbalism courses offered in person, um, which is weird in California. They were all Northern California and I just didn't have the ability to go to, to leave. It was like, it was going to be an 18th month course. So it was just not, it was not feasible. Um, I ended up actually through a really amazing friend of mine who, you know, Faye, um, my Reiki master, she ended up, she was in Ojai and she, she happened to be visiting in Ojai. She saw a poster board on the wall and said, Oh my God, Michelle, you should call this, you know, woman and find out about her herbalism. Lo and behold, I had already called her and left a message and her class was already closed, but her and I had this conversation on the phone, uh, Carol Wade, um, earth Island herbs. She's an amazing woman. We ended up connecting and I joined her course in Ojai and she's just the real deal. Like we've had, we've had probably had so many past lives together because the moment we met in person, she hugged me and she's like, I don't know why. I just feel like I need to hug you. I'm like, okay. Like, do I look that sad? And she's like, no. She goes, I feel like you're my, like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like you're my, like my daughter or something. And we just ended up having this beautiful experience. And that really was a retreat-like experience. I was driving out to Ojai every weekend for book class and um, over 18 months. So my, my class, I think, started with 12 and we ended up a graduating class of like eight. Um, but it was wonderful. There was a garden there. So we worked in the garden. We worked with our hands um, in the soil, in the earth. Uh, my teacher was a very spiritual teacher, so she taught us about, you know, plants have spirit just like everything else. And I had worked with a lot of plant medicines. Plant medicines are, are essentially psychedelics, but they are governed by a spirit. And you guys have probably heard of like ayahuasca or peyote, which is ancient Native American, you know, um, cactus that they work with, and, uh, or mushrooms, psychedelic mushrooms. 
um, cybacillin and that sort of thing. I had worked with different plant medicines before, but this herbalism course was not teaching that. I want to make that clear. This herbalism course was really about understanding that plants have spirit, plants have an energy, plants have, a, have an imprint that they, plants have been here long before we have, and they carry this imprint all through life. So they are healing. The earth provides us with everything that we need. Our ancient ancestors have always healed with herbs and plants and food. Food is their healing. Chinese medicine is the same thing. The, ain't the, practice, the most ancient practice of medicine is, is Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine. And um, they are working with herbs and you know, there are cures for cancer. There's cures for um, epilepsy, just everything you could possibly think of. It's all here on our planet. Like God or source, whatever you believe in, he didn't just dump us here and say, figure it out. It was all here for us. It was. And this is in the ancient teachings. It's just that in the Western world, we've shied away from it. The pharmaceutical industry, another corrupt uh, organization, that, that's a whole other podcast, um, that, that has taken over and it's money and it's power and it's ego. So unfortunately, we've been tricked and we've been lied to our whole life in Western society and taught that no, 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 this is the only way to do things. Your medicine needs to come from a doctor um, and uh, an MD, and it has to come from a pharmacy. And we forgot to teach our children that we can heal with herbs, we can heal with plants. So the herbalism course was really um, working with tons of different types of herbs, understanding um, you know, the Latin binomials and understanding all the, you know, the the um the beautiful health benefits and effects that different herbs have how to combine herbs and all of that i mean it was a beautiful wonderful experience i love the course and i learned a lot but i have to say herbalism is not something i don't call myself an an herbalist as you know i am certified herbalist but an er herbalism is a lifelong practice and you know i i do not claim to be an expert in herbalism at all um, but I've taken bits and pieces that have resonated with me and I've integrated that into the nutrition programs I offer. I've integrated that into my own life. So I'm, you know, I'm a believer in all of that. Uh, being from Jersey, I don't know what herbalism is. Well, I didn't, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is it recipes? So tell me like, a little bit more basic. Like, is it just learning about like the benefits of consuming plants? So herbalism we actually create we create tinctures so we create medicine we literally create medicine so oh. what we do is we learn how to extract the medicinal parts of the plants and there's a whole process to extract and there's tons of different ways to extract different plants require different things so we are um we're nurturing and taking care of the plants like imagine like you're raising like a puppy or a baby so you're nurturing and you, you develop this intuitive relationship with the plant then from there, we're, we're working with the plant, extracting the medicine. You are part of that process. So, and I'm all about like the hands-on stuff. And I just, it was such an awesome experience. And if anybody is interested in, you know, that sort of thing and loves, like I have garden, like, I don't know if you had a garden in Jersey, but I had, you know, I've always had gardens. Like I've always had raised gardens. I've always been part wanting to work with my hands in the earth. Um, I, you know, grow my own vegetables and herbs and you know and everything has a medicinal property even vegetables i mean we know this they just don't teach it the way that they should teach it um we really feel like helpless beings like we need to go to a doctor to tell us to take this specific medicine and they never tell you to eat specific foods either the doctor will just say you got to clean up your diet eat less meat and do this that's usually what they tell you and so it's like herbalism is a way to take back our power. Again, I'm going back to like that ancient tribal time. It's like, we have that in us. We have that in us to connect to this spirit realm, to, to listen to plants, to feel plants, to work with them in this way. It's just that we lost it somewhere down the road. And um, grandparents used to pass this information down to their children um, and it, it stopped happening. You know, like something simple, like let's say chamomile. Chamomile is like a you know, little flower. We all know chamomile tea, tea. It's good for bedtime because it brings you down and it relaxes you. That is a medicinal plant. That's why it's able to do that. You don't need to go take a sleeping pill. Um, you don't need to do any of those things. All you need to do is drink your plant. 
So when you start learning about plants in this way, you just it, it, it'll open you up and have a, you'll have a different perspective on what you're putting into your body. Um, the vegetables that you eat, the fruits that you eat, herbs specifically, but, but herbalism isn't just about herbs. It's just about everything that grows on this earth that is medicinal. So thank you for explaining that. That I would love that because I like plant type things. You would love it. You, I know you would love it. I want to talk about the business side too, because on the show, I encourage women to just not only have another stream of income, but do something that they love and make a business out of it. So you have been in business long before all these online coaches or yeah. every left and right. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like, does anybody remember that I was here for a long time? Yeah. Because there's a lot out there. Yes. And so you've done it from the start. I don't know if I want to ask about the challenges or just what you've learned, but share with me something that you, or just like a tip of advice that you would give somebody who is fearful, but wants to jump into something they're passionate about. So I would say, because this was a lesson that I had to go through specifically in the last couple of years. So I'm sure you have noticed this, that I kind of like disappeared for a while. And that was a very, I was going through a lot in my own personal life. Um, but I, I checked out of social media because it was starting to make me angry and it was starting, I was starting to be resentful and I was starting to feel inadequate and not enough. And I just had all these thoughts coming up that, that started making me question everything that I'd been about. And I felt like there's no way I could catch up to what's happening. And like you said, I, I started my business a long time ago. I was at the beginning of all of this and I was part of this wave and I was actually ahead of the wave, but I didn't fully jump on the bandwagon the way that everybody else did. And then I started feeling maybe I missed the boat. So I just had all these feelings of inadequacy start to come up. And I knew that that wasn't about, nobody was putting that in my head. Nobody was, you know, telling me these things. It was all coming from me. So my two years of checking out of like social media was really about me exploring um, everything that I was going through. I had lost a friend that was close to me. And, but I was going through this whole, like another transformation process and I had to check out to really figure out what the issue was. So I would say one thing, because I'm going to talk about social media just because it's so big. And I think that that creates a lot of fear in people because they're constantly comparing themselves to everything out there. And I, I, I got victim, victim to that. I was totally doing that and it slowly started to crush me and diminish me only because I was trying to fit into the box in my mind that you had to be in to be this top person. If you weren't top on Instagram, on social media, who are you, you know? And I was trying to compress myself down into this box. And because I did that, um, I started just feeling like I wasn't enough. So the thing I would say about social media is do not let that inhibit you from fully being yourself. There's a lot of bullshit on social media. We all know that. There's a lot of stuff on social media that um, it's not real anymore. Not, I don't know if it ever was 100% real, but 100% now, I'd say 99% of what out there is not real. It's just really pretty to look at. And it's, it's like watching TV or it's like watching a movie. And it's not real life. So that's number one, separate yourself from that. Number two, even if it was real life, and even if all these things were real and everybody was just so amazing the way that they're presenting themselves to be, you are you. You are always going to be you. That's what makes you so special. That's what makes this planet so special is that we are individuals. We all have gifts to offer. So if social media makes you crazy and makes you feel inadequate, take a break. Separate yourself from it. Don't go browsing on social media. You know, maybe you check in on your friends and that's pretty much it. But don't go looking for things that are going to make you feel worse about yourself. And that's kind of part of the, the social media thing is, you know, in the internet is like, it's really sucked us into this place where it's a part of the numbing thing. I really believe that we're all being brainwashed all the time. It's like, how much of your power are you going to give away? So for me, checking out of social media allowed me to start to reassess myself and get my power back and remind myself how, how wonderful I am. And it's okay to say that you're wonderful. And it's okay to say that you're good at what you do. And it's okay to say that you have a gift. It's not about comparing yourself to other people's gifts. It's about knowing where your gifts are coming from. You're coming from a good place. Your goal is to help people, to inspire people. You've had this amazing experience in your own life and you want to share that with others. That's all it is. So you share it and put it out there 
without expectation, because if we place too many expectations on an outcome, we're just only going to be disappointed. And not that you shouldn't have high expectations of yourself and in your own life, but don't have any kind of expectation of an outcome. Be your truest self in no matter what you do, what kind of business you start, just be you, give your all, come from a good place, and the universe reciprocates. You start to have people come to you that you would never expect come to you. And I want to say when I started my business, and I obviously I was a different person. I was such a different person, 25, 26 years old. Um, when I started my business, um, I, had, I was an intense person. I was this all or nothing, um, achievement-based, like work hard and get what you want and don't stop. I would, I would like brag that I only slept like four hours a night. I mean, I was like intense. So I attracted a lot of really intense people. And then eventually I changed again. And then all these intense people that I had, I started realizing, oh my gosh, I don't have any boundaries. It's time to set some boundaries. That means I might lose some money. I might lose people that following me and liking what I do. Um, but I have to be true to me and I can't allow myself to be sucked dry like this. I need to really reevaluate and reassess. So the boundaries are really important when you're starting a business. Um, I put up new boundaries in my life. I created that space. I got rid of all the toxic relationships in every different form and fashion. And then I changed again. And then I started attracting people that I didn't have to explain the spiritual side of what I was doing with my business. I didn't have to, I only got to talk about it because they were already there for it. They were like, Michelle, I came to you because I know you're just more, I know you're more than the body. I came to you because um, I want to, I want to transform all areas of my life. I don't even know what that means, but I know that you're the one that's going to help me do it. And that was a beautiful thing when that started happening. Um, and then I went through that phase of the last two years, no social media. And I, I almost, I have to really admit this, honestly, I almost thought that I was in the wrong line of business. I actually felt like I don't want to talk about nutrition anymore. I don't want to talk about training anymore. I don't want to talk about your bikini body anymore. I don't want to talk about anything that has to do with anything superficial and physical. And that's not what I'm here for. I'm so much more than that. I'm meant to do more than that on this planet. And I felt like, oh, I just felt completely unaligned with what I had always done and what was in my heart. But what was happening was this next chapter of this identity shift within myself it was this next chapter of transformation. It was a really big one. And it was like I had to come back to my business with a new perspective. So checking out of social media helped me to do that. Um, and I came back. Now I'm back. This is, this is me back. And um, I have a whole new perspective on my entire business. 100%, as long as I'm here on this planet, I'm a human as far as I know right now, in this body, having this experience, and I'm supposed to help other people awaken to all of this. I do know that. I'm good at nutrition, I'm good at training, and I'm good at um, intuitive physical body work. So that is where my bread and butter needs to come from. And I, I needed to learn how to trust that again and have this newfound perspective. But I also know that I am so much more than that. I'm so much more expansive than that. And so that's it. That's all I, you know, it's, it's perspective on my business. So the direction I'm going now is obviously building in Belize. I actually have a new website that's launching this month before the new year. Um, I have a huge contest that I'm doing and I'm giving away lots of money. So I'm giving away $1,700. It's going to be a really fun, um, exciting contest, a transformation contest on many different levels. And so I'm going to be announcing that in the next week. So Everything that's happening right now is kind of guiding and pushing into this next chapter. Um, I really am about healing the planet, whatever that means. And maybe my little contribution to that is um, helping people to open up to their physical body so that they can, they can free themselves of this, this place that we're in and this, the way society has pinned us in this little box. So I think that's, that's what's happening right now. And there's a lot of dark on this planet, but you cannot see the light unless you can admit and experience that there is dark. And, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about politics, but I have to say there's, 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 we've, we've seen a lot of shifts that are happening in politics. And it's important to know that this, 
This is symbolic of the universal things that are changing on this planet. It's time. The old ways don't work anymore. So even though things might be happening abruptly and people are scared or they think that our leaders are not, you know, they don't, they're not in their right mind or whatever they might think. I actually feel different. I feel that change is necessary. And sometimes change feels really uncomfortable at first, but there's a bigger thing at play on a spiritual level. There's a much bigger, um, battle that's happening. And, um, you know, um, there's a lot of abuse on our planet. There's a lot of child abuse. Um, there's a lot of, um, um, really dark things happening on our planet that I don't think people fully realize. And I've been part of this for a long time, uh, knowing this, and I'm also going to be part of that awakening and healing. And as more of this comes out, I'm, I'm here to support my clients through their healing because a lot of these things, it's triggers. So it's triggers of our own life. And so I'm a healer. I'm a healer. So I'm here to heal and help however I can on people's journeys. You're doing so many amazing things and I'm excited for what is to come for you. Thank Just you. To reiterate, I think stepping away from social media is how you get to have your own thoughts come back to you. Like imagine yes. that, having your own thoughts, not people oh. giving you thoughts while scrolling. So I think that's how you start to awaken what what would I do if I literally could have my own business or how would I help people or what do I actually like to do instead of just like going through the motions of feeding my family and going to sleep every night? Like what do I like and what should I do while I'm here? And stepping away from social media is a good first step. When can I come see you in Belize? Oh, so, so I've had the land for two years. Um, I was just there like a few months ago. So I was, um, I'm working with builders there. We haven't started the building process. I have to wait till after rainy season. Of course, you'll be coming to the grand opening and I'm inviting all my, you know, my friends and family to come experience that. And so, yeah, it'll happen soon. And if I do have another retreat, I'll definitely keep you posted. Um, I say never say never because I get the retreat itch all the time. That's why I keep doing them. Cause I'm like, <laughs> Because we need it. We really do. Everybody needs it. We need to be reminded, instead of watching everyone go to Tulum, we need to actually go there ourselves, you know, and not to film, just to go and experience and be present with the experience. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I was going to say earlier, like patience in our journey, patience in our process, not trying to rush losing weight, rush getting our kids through the school year, like just enjoying where we are because it's part of where we're supposed to be. Yes, yeah, it's part of our growth. Another thing I would say too is, we, so sometimes we get into something new and fresh. Like I'm thinking back to the first time I ever did the competition and I transformed. I really believed in that moment, that's the end all be all. It matters so much, it's such an important thing. And it was really, really important for sure. But, but I was 25 years old. I was really young and I hadn't yet, you know, experienced enough in life to realize we go through this all the time. So if you're really open to it, don't put so much pressure. If you're starting a new business or you're doing any new venture, anything new that's scary and exciting, don't put pressure on it having to look a certain way. Don't put pressure on any sort of outcome at all, because whatever outcome you think you're stepping into, I can guarantee it's going to be the complete opposite. So you'll save yourself a lot of um, heartache and disappointment if you just really trust the process, go through it, have patience, like you said, and know that this is, it, there's more to come. There's so much more to come. Just when you think you've, you've had, you're at your peak, there is so much more to come. And that's what I realized. It, it's, it's been a humbling experience, actually, when I started to view it that way, because I've gone like this. And even when I hit those really low peaks where I, or low valleys where I feel like, oh my God, I'm at rock bottom again. Because I did feel like that about two years ago when my friend passed away, I completely checked out. I didn't want to do, I didn't want to work anymore. I didn't want to have anything to do with my business. Not that I didn't want to work. I just, it, I just felt lost. I felt really lost. And I thought, oh my God, I destroyed everything that I built. And I really, really, really believe that. Um, but it's important to know that the highs and the lows are all part of the journey. And don't attach to any kind of outcome. Don't attach to any of it. Observe it. Don't absorb it, go with the flow, ride the waves, all of that. And in order to do that, you have to take action. So instead yeah. of thinking about it and next Mondaying it, take the action, whatever it is, because then the exciting next step will come. Yes, yes. That, yeah, you got to take action or else none of this is going to happen or else you're not riding any wave. You're like, 
<laughs> Where can we find you online? So um, my website is empoweringbody.com. It's also, it's going to stay empoweringbody.com, but you can find me at michellediangona.com, which is just more difficult to spell. Um, and then my Instagram, which is something that I still do use, is L-I-L-M-I-S-S-M-I-C-H-E-L-E. -E. I'm sure you'll pop it up somewhere. Um, so it's Little Miss Michelle. So those are the main places that you can find me. And thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom with us. And I look forward to seeing what's to come. Okay. Thank you so much, Erin, for having me. I want to speak with you again. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.